Welcome back, everybody. The market stocks extending Friday's sell-off. The Dow shedding 900 at the low so far. The Nasdaq was down 4.5%. We're just off that right now. My next guest, though, says all hope is not lost. He's got some buys amid the wreckage. He's actually sticking with old tech. You see some of the names there. David Bonson joins me now. He's the chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. David, can you weigh in on this kind of top-level discussion about being in stocks at all right now? Are you going to be kicking yourself in a year that you didn't get in, or are you going to be sitting pretty because we could be in for a prolonged period of pain? No, I think in a year people will be kicking themselves, and that's not to say that things will be 20 or 30 percent higher in a year. It's to say that this asset class is intended for long-term investors, and for a long-term investor to miss those points at which there is distress and, and price depreciation is to take away a ton of the long-term gains that come for being in stocks. And so one year, three year, five year, you have to ride out certain periods of volatility. I think everyone knows that. I think history speaks to it very clearly, but it's hard during periods like this. And then you have to find things to do to make it less hard. Focus on quality. Don't get overly speculative. You know, the heavy concentration in NASDAQ type names is hard to bear, but we think there's a better way for people. Are the 70s a good analogy for what we could be going through now? I mean, what are the lessons for investing in kind of a, a high inflation environment where you don't know how long that environment exactly is going to last? Yeah, it's very difficult to compare this to the 70s for a lot of reasons. The Federal Reserve was much less interventionist in the 70s. People could have said that's a bad thing or a good thing. You know, when you had the 74, 75 bear market, we were only three years removed from President Nixon taking us off the last vestiges of the gold standard. So the world has changed a lot in the last 48 years. I know that because I was born in 1974. <laughs> and Kelly, I think that right now, um, people are primarily trying to guess what, the, what people are gonna guess about what the Fed does. That's no way to invest. People have to look at fundamental value. We do that by looking at dividends and cash flows and buy companies that long term are going to give that great return. One sort of final remark about the analogies is if you look back to the 70s, it's a little disconcerting that even the deep recessions didn't stop inflation. Do you think that was just a unique phenomenon of the time or does it point to something we're still going to have to grapple with here today? No, I believe that so much of this inflation is, in fact, supply side driven and that uh, even what Volcker did in the early 80s, I think, gets a lot of attention for good reason. But we miss out on the incredible supply side issues, lower marginal tax rates, deregulation. There's a lot of things that can solve some of this inflation. Look, uh, core inflation it can start to come down. Headline inflation is the problem. Food and energy. People eat. People drive. But there really are supply side solutions to a lot of that. So I don't think it's going to require the Fed to put us into a recession that lasts for a long time, like early 80s and mid 70s. Yeah, no, it does make you wonder you know, outcome of midterms, maybe outcome of next election and what that, you know, then you have to kind of game through those scenarios. Let's leave all that to the side. You do have a bunch of stocks, David, that you think offer uh, some value right now. Run us through them and, and why. Yeah, I mentioned Kohl's, ticker KSS, in, in the notes I sent you all ahead of time. And it's funny, uh, we do not get engaged in merger arbitrage. Like, we would not be buying Kohl's just because there's a $60 takeout on the table and it was a $45 stock this morning. It's forty forty one right now. Um, however, there's this sort of possibility of an immediate push higher. And if that falls apart, we still like it. So it's not a merger arb play. It's fundamental. $1.7 billion of free cash flow last year. $1.2 billion the year before. And then they had a, a difficult second quarter, which they've had a difficult second quarter, I think, three of the last five years. But now the stock's trading at six or seven times earnings. So we have to look to free cash flows as value investors, a 5% dividend yield. We like this either in a takeout or not. And IBM and 3M, same thing, both offer about a 5% yield right now. But do you think that your returns are safe? 
I do, definitely. And I think that with uh, 3M, you're just getting to buy at a really low level. Uh, we would have liked the stock $50 higher as well. It's one of these long-term type companies that makes things people have to have. IBM's a fascinating story. You talk about a hybrid of value and growth, similar to the way we talked about Microsoft over 10 years ago, that it was so cheap and so the stock had been down for so long, it was, a, it was showing up in value indexes, and yet it had this high growth potential in the cloud. IBM is a pure value play, low multiple, but they're now a major player in cloud with the Red Hat acquisition. They have done significant things in artificial intelligence, blockchain, uh, the actual side of blockchain that can really be meaningful and actually make people money. So we think IBM is a 5% dividend payer that has great stock price appreciation in front of it. All right. Well, some constructive ideas and a destructive tape. So we appreciate it, David, very much. David Thanks, Bonson Kelly. joining me this afternoon.